So the first weekend of championship action did not disappoint. Let's hop into game week two. Back to another video on the channel as always we've got some massive games to preview and predict in today's video if you want to get yourself entered into this season's prediction league all you need to do is leave your score predictions in the comments down below we have an exclusive one that's going on over on patreon as well but the youtube one is free to enter all you need to do is leave your comments down below and let me know what you think is going to happen this weekend but before we get into these matches let's have a look at how the prediction league tables are shaping up after game week one starting out with the main prediction league this is how the updated standings are now looking so we've added all the patreon people onto this league now as well and it is jmat who is leading the way after game week one having an absolutely storming week picking up 17 points so obviously you get 1.4 a correct prediction in terms of the result outcome three points then for a correct scoreline and jmat has absolutely stormed it in the first week i do recognize quite a few of the names here and in and around the top of the list i myself have had a pretty decent start and that doesn't tend to happen they usually start out quite slowly and then build my way up as the season goes along but yeah I had an absolute storm of a week picking up 13 points. This is how League One is looking after the first game week of fixtures as well so it's already pretty competitive in here you know the watermark is already fairly high for getting yourself into League One. Uh, I recognise a few of the names around here as well. Ant Shipman who was in the round the top of the Prediction League at times last season is in League One at the moment. And then finishing it off with League Two where it is Callum Thorpe who is currently leading the way with 9 points so you need a minimum of 8 points to go and get yourselves onto the League 2 leaderboard. So if you weren't involved in last week's predictions, make sure to get involved now. Or if you were, obviously you will be already on the prediction leaderboard. You'll just be a little bit lower than League 2. But it's loads of fun throughout the season. Make sure to get involved. But now without any further ado, guys, let's hop into my score predictions. So we're starting things out with Saturday's early kickoff. That sees Peterborough going up against Derby. No Friday night game this week, so you guys have got a little bit longer to get your score predictions in. But an intriguing game nonetheless as the early kickoff on Saturday. At the start of the season, I did have both these sides in my bottom three, so it'll be interesting to see where their levels are currently at. Obviously, Peterborough didn't exactly get off to the ideal start last weekend, a 3-0 loss against Luton. They just looked a little bit lost in that one. Going forward, they never really seemed to get into their flow. They only had one shot on target um, in the entire 90. Dolby were obviously playing a bit of a you know COVID hit Huddersfield side, but nevertheless, got a decent point in that game. It's also worth mentioning that obviously all the championship clubs were involved in the cup action in midweek although the most teams did make changes it's worth considering regardless uh, Peterborough did lose 4-0 um, in midweek against Plymouth although they did make quite a few changes Derby drew 3-3 against Salford to go on and win on penalties Revel Morrison scored a bit of the beauty of a goal in that game with Peterborough I do feel like sometimes it takes a bit of time for teams coming up from League 1 to the Championship to acclimatise to the new level we saw that with Wickham last season as they lost their first 7 Championship matches before they really got competitive and got their sort of foot on the ground. Funnily enough, it happened to Peterborough last time they were in the Championship. They lost their first seven matches of the season. Then they sort of kicked up into gear. Obviously, that wasn't enough in the end, and that bad start sort of held them back. Derby, they have a fairly streetwise 11 now, especially with some of the experience that they brought into that side. Their real problem this season will be with squad depth, so I can't help but feel like maybe Derby will start out the season fairly well and they'll pick up a few results you know, early on. But when crunch time comes, when a couple of injuries accumulate you know, over that Christmas period, that's where Dolby could struggle. So going off that basis right now, I think that Dolby could edge this one and their problems may come later in the season, whereas Peterborough may grow into the season as the year goes on. So for a score prediction in this one, I'm going to go 2-1 Dolby. FIFA's going 2-0 Dolby. Next up then to Oakwell, we've got Barnsley going up against Coventry. Now Barnsley and Marcus Shop, we saw shades of the sort of new style of play that he's looking to integrate there. Um, in that 1-1 draw they had on the opening day of the season against Cardiff. I think it's going to take a bit of time for Barnsley to properly establish that new philosophy and they might be another one of those sides that sort of grows into this season as they get more familiar and comfortable as the season goes on. Coventry, it was a great season opener. They went 1-0 behind against Forest and then brought things back late on. Cal McFadden with that last gas winner to make things 2-1 and give them all three points. Both sides were involved in cup action in midweek and both sides did go out to lower league opposition but you know, they each made changes for that match. It's a tough score prediction to make this one with where each side's at at the moment. I think that 
I think I'm swaying towards a draw with this game, to be honest with you. I don't think there'll be all too much in this one. I'm going to go for a 1-1 with FIFA going 2-0 Barnsley. Next up then, we're heading to St. Andrews, where we've got Birmingham going up against Stoke. Now, each side got off to a good start to the season. Birmingham beat Sheffield United, and Stoke were victorious against Reading. Now, there might be a bit of a weird atmosphere for this one, just because they have to close two of the stands for this game because of the repair work that's going on in the stadium at the moment. So, that may give Stoke... A a little bit of an advantage with sort of half the stadium being empty because they're not able um, to go with full capacity at the moment because of that repair work. It's a little bit of a shambles really that this all wasn't sorted out um, ahead of time really but regardless I don't think there'll be all too much in this game. Birmingham showed in that game against Sheffield United that they're quite comfortable to be without the ball and that when they do hit you on the counter attack they have real players of quality you know Chong especially you know had a few glimpses in that match and I'm excited to see how he gets on as the season progresses. Stoke have done even more more work in the transfer market since their opening day fixture with Leo Ostergaard coming into that back three and things are shaping up pretty nicely for Stoke at the moment you have to say especially considering they still got Tyrese Campbell to come back into this 11. For this game if I had to lean one way I think I would just be going Stoke but I don't think that there's going to be much to split these two. I'm going to go for a 1-1 draw here. FIFA is going to agree with me for that one. Next up then we are heading to Bloomfield Road where we've got Blackpool going up against Cardiff. Now both sides play out draws on the opening day. Blackpool drew against Bristol City and Cardiff drew against Barnsley. In Blackpool's opening fixture I think that they were not on the back foot for the majority of it but they were happy to sort of sit in for a lot of that game weren't they? Obviously they went 1-0 behind and then towards the last sort of 10 minutes of that game there was a bit of a momentum swing. They went forward and they got their equaliser. For Cardiff, they were pretty impressive on the road last season. Only Brentford and Norwich picked up more points away from home last season than Cardiff did. And it's an interesting game because it's two sides here who are both pretty happy to be without the ball. Um, Cardiff obviously have the advantage of Kiefer Moore coming back into the frame. He could only make the bench last time out, but he did start in their midweek game in the EFL Cup. Uh, Blackpool actually victorious in that game in midweek. They beat Middlesbrough by three goals to nil, um, which will be a big confidence booster. For this one, I can't help but feel like maybe with Cardiff being that bit more streetwise and having that experience about them, that they may just edge this one, but Blackpool's first game back up in the Championship, back at Bloomfield Road, also may have something to play into this one. For a score prediction, I think I'm just going to edge Cardiff here with Kiefer Moore back. I'm going to go 2-1 Cardiff. FIFA's going for a 1-1 draw. Next up then we are going to Huddersfield up against Fulham. Now Huddersfield's preparation coming into this game and their game last weekend hasn't exactly been ideal because of the COVID situation at the club at the moment. But I mean there were a couple bright sparks to take from that Derby performance. One of them being Sorba Thomas. Really looking forward to seeing how he goes on um, over this season. He was a real highlight from that game. Fulham's game against Middlesbrough ultimately ended in frustration. They controlled large portions of that match but ultimately failed to get that second goal to kill it off and Middlesbrough obviously crept back into it as the game went on. Fulham's biggest weakness at the moment looks to be in midfield with the players they have missing in the area at the moment. You know Tom Kearney and Harrison Reed both missing with injuries um, and Guita's current situation with the club as well. There just seems to be a lack of a little bit of bite in that midfield um, which is one area where Huddersfield could potentially look to target but I, I do anticipate Fulham to click up into year eventually with all the quality they have in that squad. It's just a question of will this weekend be the weekend for them. Um, for a score prediction, I think I am going to back Fulham for this one. I'm going to go 2-0 to the away side with FIFA going 1-0 Fulham. Next up then we are going to Hull up against QPR. Now this has the potential to be the game of the weekend. Hull were absolutely brilliant on the opening weekend as they blew North End away putting four goals past us. QPR, a lot of people are also expecting good things from this season. Took a little bit of time for them to get going against Millwall but when they did um, they certainly showed what they were capable of Rob Dickey scored again in midweek by the way by the end of the season he's going to be in the top 10 championship goal scorers um, at this rate isn't he but it's an interesting one Hull do have a few injury concerns coming into this game they were missing a fair few players from their opening day trip to Deepdale to be fair to them but Malik Wilkes has since picked up an injury and looks like he's going to be facing some time on the sidelines which is obviously quite the blow you know that forward three for Hull um, was looking really deadly at Deepdale so Maybe that paves the way for Randall Williams to come into the equation. Obviously, the player they picked up from Exeter in this summer transfer window. But, I mean, I'm in no doubt that this whole side will score goals this season. You know, Keen Lewis Potter, we've spoken about him quite a few times on the channel over the last week or so. He was absolutely brilliant at Deepdale. He scored again in midweek as well. Um, so, I'm, no, I'm in no doubt that it'll cause QPR some problems in this one. For a score prediction... 
Going to go for a thrilling 2-2 draw. If I had to sway either way, then maybe QPR might fancy their chances because of some of the injuries that Hull have got at the moment. But now I'm going to say that Hull will get a point from this one and go for a 2-2 draw. Thief is going 2-0 Hull. Next up then, we are going to Middlesbrough up against Bristol City. Now, from the outside looking in, I wouldn't bank on this game having the most goals in this weekend. But hey... You know, these sides have proved me wrong in the past, so let's go ahead and see. First goal, either way, feels like it could be quite decisive for this game. A nil-nil wouldn't particularly surprise me for this one. Obviously, Bristol City led for a lot of that game they had against Blackpool and ultimately paid the price for not killing off that game. You know, they had quite a bit of the ball and in Blackpool's half four portions of that game, but that second goal just would never quite come for them. Middlesbrough was sort of the flip side of that. They were under the cosh for a little bit of their game against Fulham, but ended up having that response in the second half. It was quite a well worked goal in the end to be fair both sides lost in midweek in the EFL Cup however both sides made quite a few rotations in that game for Middlesbrough Borough fans did get to see Martin Payero make the first start for the club of the world as well and um, which will be a positive going forward for a score prediction I'm gonna go 1-0 Middlesbrough, I think. But 1-0 Bristol City also wouldn't surprise me. I'll go 1-0 Borough, though. FIFA's going 2-0 Bristol City. Next up, then, we go to the Den, as we got Millwall going up against Blackburn. Now, we saw last season how much Millwall's home record actually dropped off without fans being in stadium. So, it'll be interesting to see if they do manage to pick that back up once again um, with the fans being back in the ground. I think that this will be a much sterner test for Blackburn this time round than their opening day fixture was against Swansea. I think they had the highest XG of any championship side that weekend but a lot of that was probably based on Swansea messing around at the back and gifting Blackburn a few chances in that game. Millwall obviously traditionally have been quite tight um, and I think they will continue to be that this season. Millwall, I was quite impressed with actually on the opening day against QPR. The first sort of 60 minutes especially um, was a real sort of energetic performance. A lot was going into it. It just seemed towards the later stages of that game that they just seemed to run out of a bit of steam. So uh, for a score prediction in this one, I think I am edging towards Millwall, you know. Blackburn obviously got off to that great start to the season, but stylistically, I think that Millwall will be a much tougher test. So I'm going to go 2 1 Millwall in this game. Thief is going 1 0 Blackburn. Next up, then, we are heading to the City Ground, where we've got Nottingham Forest going up against Bournemouth. Now, this is a fairly tricky game to predict, to be honest with you. Nottingham Forest on the opening day, where frustrating. I think that Chris Hewton's pragmatism maybe came back to bite them in the end. They looked to be in control of portions of that first half, but their energy levels fell off to such a degree in that second half that they were happy sort of to consolidate on what they have. And obviously Coventry ended up scoring those two late goals. Bournemouth on the opening day, considering the players they had missing, I thought it actually looked really good to be honest with you. I thought it would take Scott Parker a little bit more time to properly sort of get his philosophy and ideas across to this side. But yeah, considering some of the big names they were missing, but they looked pretty good in that one against West Brom. Uh, Dan Juma and Ben Pearson have also been back in training this week for Bournemouth. Whether or not this game will come too soon for them though, that might end up being the case, but they are at least um, edging closer to full fitness and back being involved. You know, they may be involved in the 18 or something like that. For a score prediction in this one, a draw wouldn't massively surprise me here, but I think I'm just gonna edge Bournemouth, maybe. With Forrest in midweek, we did see Jao Carvalho pop up with a brace in the cup, so it'll be interesting to see if he's involved or not. But I think Bournemouth might just have that extra bit of quality. I'm going to go 2-1 Bournemouth. FIFA's going 1-1. Next up then we go to Reading up against Preston. Neither side got off to an ideal start to the season as we both lost on the opening day. Reading lost 3-2 against Stoke and Preston were absolutely humiliated by shipping four goals to Hull. I'm hopeful that I'll win in midweek, albeit it was only against Mansfield, but we put three goals past them. I'm hopeful that that will give us at least some sort of a boost coming into this game. You know, Scott Sinclair but came back into the 11 for that game score the brace and Emil Reese also got on the score sheet. Emil Reese had a very good game actually against Reading last season as we put three goals past them but quite a bit has changed since we last played each other. With Reading their real problem is squad depth at the moment. They're looking incredibly thin on the ground. They couldn't name a full bench in their season opener against Stoke. What I think could end up being a bit of a decisive factor for this game is if Reading have those players, you know, fully back from their injuries, you know, Lucas Jow and John Swift and Ovi Ajaria, I believe are all touch and go at the moment in terms of whether they will be ready to start this game. Obviously, Swift looked brilliant on that season opener against uh, Stoke, and he always seems to have a great game against us. So if he is back fully fit for this one, yeah, Preston could be in trouble because defensively, we looked horrendous in that game against Hull. Four score prediction in this one. 
I hope we prove. I hope Preston proved me wrong, but I'm going to go two on Reading. Thief is going to go for a 1-1 draw. Next up then, we are going to the Hawthorns, where we got West Brom going up against Luton. I have the feeling that this one could be a good game as well. Now, West Brom, it was quite a lively game that they were involved in on the first game of the season. Obviously, that 2-2 draw with Bournemouth, there were a few sort of concerns and things to work on um, over the week, which I'm sure Valor and Ishmael will have done. But there were also some positives as well. Um, that dynamic that they potentially got there between Diane Garner, Callum Robinson and Calden Grant, I do think there is something to build on there, although they are looking for that more like thick striker and um, to come in and play that DK role like um, Ishmael had at Barnsley last season. One of the potential concerns was the back three and maybe the lack of mobility in there as they are looking to play such a high line you know with that pressing football they're looking to get that middle compact you know a ball over the top or something like that can cause them a problem um, especially with how aggressive um, their wing backs like to be. Now you look at Luton last week and how well they did especially in a forward sense against Peterborough someone like a Fred on your dimmer you know drifting into those positions, looking to get one of those wide centre-backs isolated in a high area up the pitch, and that's where Luton could really cause them some problems. Last season, Luton on the road were a really effective side um, away from home. They only scored 16 goals, but still managed to pick up 29 points away from home, so they kept things really tight at the back and were able to hit teams when it matters. But obviously, West Brom have that extra bit of quality and are expected to be in and amongst the top two this season. For a score prediction in this one, I wouldn't be surprised if Luton and got something from this one, but I think that West Brom's quality may just shine through. I'm going to go 2-1 West Brom. Thief is going 1-1. And then last up, as the last kickoff on Saturday, we have Swansea going up against Sheffield United. Neither side won on the opening day, so we're both looking for their first points of the season in this fixture. Two new managers coming in this season, obviously Russell Martin with Swansea and Slav with Sheffield United, both looking to play sort of a progressive possession-based system so this will be an interesting game both teams will be looking to dominate the ball the midfield battle for this one will be absolutely crucial in Swansea's season opener against Blackburn we certainly saw shades of what Russell Martin was trying to do but I mean they played themselves into trouble so many times at the back and you can't help but feel like if they do something similar in this game with the quality of strikers that Sheffield United have, I know that that didn't tell on their opening day against Birmingham, but if Swansea play themselves into trouble at the back once again, Sheffield United could definitely profit from those sort of situations. Having said that, Sheffield United didn't exactly look all too sharp on the opening day themselves. They were pretty disappointing, to be honest with you, against Birmingham. They absolutely dominated the ball. I think they had 76% possession in that game, but in terms of crafting out clear-cut chances and having that bit more dynamism in the final third, just seemed to be missing from them um, in that game. So these sides may both be sides who grow into the season as sort of these new philosophies get a bit more integrated into the teams you know it's quite a you know far cry from you know Sheffield United under Wilder and Swansea under Steve Cooper so for our score prediction in this one I'm going to go for a draw I'm going to go for a 1-1 FIFA's going for a nil nil but guys there we have it that will wrap it up for my championship week two score predictions like I say if you want to get involved in this season's prediction league all you need to do is leave your score predictions in the comments down below and you will be entered into it it is that simple but apart from that thank you very much for watching guys if you did go into enjoy make sure to leave a like stay subscribed for a bit of regular championship content but apart from that thanks for watching and i'll see you all in the next one